I would divide science fiction up temporally. There's um, far future science fiction, which we would call space opera. People are zipping around the galaxy. Star Wars, tar Star Trek, space opera. People know what it is, but it's a form of fantasy, as I tried to show in my novel Aurora, but it's a great story space. There's no, no knock against space opera. It's not normally what I do. In fact, I think I've only tried it once or twice, but it's out there. And, and a lot of people, when they, you say science fiction, they're thinking just that. But there's also near future science fiction, and it's very common in science fiction that the present is, is presented as a few years pushed down the line with some classic SF extrapolation of trends to show what seems interesting in now. It's a form of realism to write now and reads as such. It's better realism than literary fiction is, with, without a doubt. And that's a, a big part of why science fiction has an impact in the world. Then there's the middle zone, relatively depopulate. Um, what I call it future history, a century out, two centuries out, three centuries out. If you think about it, you're not going to find too many science fiction classics that fit that zone. But if you think about my career, the Mars Trilogy, uh, New York 2140, that's the year. 2312, that's the year. Where you actually see not just what will happen with the present pushed, but what kind of historical change is possible from where we are right now? And you can say, well, yeah, I mean, it could happen. No laws of physics are broken. It's not space opera. There's a history that runs back to now. Super interesting thing. Well, in Ministry for the Future, without planning it, what I think I did by accident was to take future history, where history really has happened, and I jammed it into the near future science fiction moment. So stuff that I used to write about happening 200 years from now, I said, look, it's happening in the year 2035, or it's starting right now.